Hello there, it's been about two and a half years since my most used lip balm video and I get, but what's your favourite a lot? Time for an update, revisiting the list from that previous video, fine tuning it to be the best of the best from my personal lip balm journey, products I've repurchased the most over the years and will continue to keep around. They're the always have multiples, by my bed, in my bag, on my desk kind of balms, nine never without a backup balms, keeping my lips in good condition or coming to the rescue to repair them. Reliable old friends, luxury brands, drugstore bargains, Australian and French favourites. Lip balm might be the most personal subject in the entire beauty industry. One person's best balm ever is another's didn't do anything. Nearly 5,000 comments on my 2018 lip balm video tell me we feel pretty strongly about this subject, but I can only share my experience, not make specific recommendations for you without knowing you or your preferences, style, budget, ingredient sensitivities. Perhaps something here might catch your eye, but I hope you'll do more research to work out if it's the right fit for you. You know I love a tinted balm too, tons of videos linked below, but I don't think of tints here because when I want hydration or help with my lips, I stick to something clear that I can really work in, rub my lips together and not get in a mess with colour. Some are 84 Australian dollars, yikes. Some are less than $4, 40 pounds, four pounds. Bit of balance, some to repurchase regularly, others to slow down and savor. Pots, sticks, tubes, liquids, different formulas to use in different ways. Within this regularly repurchased list, there's sort of three categories. My top three all-time favorites, a bunch of balms I love from Leno Lips, then sticks to throw in my bag and a liquid lip balm that doubles as a gloss. Let's go. The true answer to what's my favorite lip balm? It's a three-way tie. By Terry, Balm de Rose is one of the most luxurious lip products in the world, known as the Rolls Royce of the balm business with a price tag to match. I'd heard people raving about it for years, but when I first tried it five years ago, I wasn't sure I got it. Yes, it's rich and buttery, but thicker than I was used to and almost seemed sticky. Not when you apply light layers. That's the trick. You don't need much, so the pot really lasts. Key ingredients, rose blossom essential wax, shea butter, vitamin E, and hyaluronic acid microspheres. Scent, rose petals. Heaven. I know many of you have tried and fallen for it too, but I also know it's too strong for some. Before bed, I work a small amount into my lips with my fingertip so it melts in. Pillowy soft and smooth by morning. Balancing that out with a bargain. My oldest ongoing favorite, Blistex Lip Conditioner Pot. My family's sworn by this for years. It's what I always reach for if my lips really need repair. There's something so effective about this to help tackle serious dryness, sunburn, splits. I bought a new backup the other day and noticed the SPF 15 has been bumped up to SPF 30. Remember to protect those lips. Blistex is available internationally, but the packaging and formulas vary. So this silver pot is the one sold in Australia. Key ingredients, cocoa butter and vitamin E, scent, cosmetic meets cocoa. Then the Blistex Lip Conditioning Balm Stick is my portable put in every bag Blistex to go. Not as repairing as the pot, but easier and more hygienic to use on the run. It's reasonably soft, so you can keep swiping it on and build it a bit if you want a slightly thicker layer. One of my favorite ways to use it is to prep my lips before and during lipstick to make it more comfortable. I layer it underneath, then over my lipstick, blot with tissue, reapply lipstick, blot, reapply balm, and repeat if they feel dry later. Same vitamin E and cocoa butter key ingredients, same cosmetic cocoa scent, same SPF 30. Loyal Leno Lips user here. I've tried most of their range, but I've grouped my top three from the brand to share the differences. Starting with their classic 101 ointment. The original is unscented, but peach from the Fruities range is a favorite when I want something deliciously sweet, and it's a bit thinner and glossier. Leno Lips is made in Australia. It's one of our brightest beauty exports, sold overseas in Ulta, Nordstrom, Net-A-Porter, Boots, Sephora Europe, Selfridges. The brand's main ingredient lanolin is the natural wax found in sheep's wool, giving their wool that greasy feel. And its molecular structure is similar to human oils, so it's an excellent barrier balm to lock in moisture. Key ingredients, lanolin, vitamin E, peach kernel oil, scent, sugary peach. Not a peach tint, just a lingering flavor. 
The easy to throw in your bag or use between lipstick layers alternative is Lanolips Lano Stick in Coconutter. I'd used the original citrusy Lano Stick for a while, but Coconutter quickly took over. This 100% natural bullet twists up, easy to swipe on. It has a neater, lighter texture than their ointment tubes, but for a stick balm, it still delivers enough oomph and a cushiony, conditioned feel to prep my lips pre-makeup. Key ingredients, lanolin and coconut oil, scent, coconut, tropical island, daydreaming at your desk. Saved my most loved Lanolips product till last. 101 ointment gets all the glory, but Golden Dry Skin Salve is gold. The best multi-purpose repairing skin salve I've ever tried. It was a huge help healing a couple of burns last year. Really nice to massage into super dry cuticles, calm irritated skin or dry patches, and it's lovely on the lips. I took it away with me recently and you know it's good when it makes the cut for travel. Probably the heaviest ointment texture, but a little bit works in really nicely. Key ingredients, lanolin, manuka honey, and vitamin E. Scent, shea buttery vanilla, maybe a hint of honey, but nowhere near as strong or sweet as their fruity 101 flavors. Bonjour Stick Balms, love a French pharmacy brand. The Caudalie Lip Conditioner was the number one balm in my French pharmacy favorites video a few years ago. I generally find balm pots most effective. They're thicker, gooier, easier to coat your lips, but this is one of the most moisturizing sticks I've used. A bit softer than Blistex and Lano Lips earlier, so it feels quite creamy and comforting for a stick. Key ingredients, ceramides, shea butter, apricot and grape oils, scent, sweet orange with a hint of vanilla, apparently. I'd never realized. I always thought it was just Caudalie's usual mix of citrus meets grapes. Bioderma is another beloved French skincare brand. I'm sure you know their micellar water, but have you seen their Atoderm moisturizing stick for lips? A little less creamy than Caudalie, but still nice and comfortable, lightweight, and I like the soft, sweet berry flavor. Key ingredient, shea butter, scent, raspberry, according to Bioderma, miscellaneous berry, according to me. Last, but by no means least, by Terry's Balm de Rose Liquid. Exactly what it sounds like, the same luxurious rosy balm from first place in liquid form. Other differences, it's more lightweight than the pot, has more shine like a gloss that's genuinely nourishing, and has a doe foot which makes it easier and more hygienic to use out and about. Comes in a travel mini too. There's a soft, subtle, creamy pink to it, but it's not an obvious tint and it looks clear once you work it in. Same key ingredients and dreamy rose scent. Certainly not last in my overall balm ranking, more like fifth, I think, after the first three and Lanolips Golden Dry Skin Salve. That's my top nine. Now it's time to share your favorite lip balm lists. Hopefully this topic doesn't reach almost 5,000 comments like last time, or I won't be able to read them all. And I want to know what's your go-to budget-friendly bargain, your luxurious lip splurge, your rolling around at the bottom of every bag type of balm. All lip balm addicts are welcome here. I'll leave previous videos on this subject linked below, but if there's any other balmy content you'd like me to cover in future, let me know. Thanks for watching. See you next time.